Welcome to MLT Online Classes. So in this lecture, I'm going to discuss about autoimmunity and autoimmune disorders. So what is autoimmunity, students? So autoimmunity means generally our immune system will develop immune resistance towards pathogens, right? Like foreign substances like bacteria, virus, either fungus or parasites. But there are some circumstances where our body will develop immunity to our own cells, our own tissues. So it will start attacking our own uh, cells and tissues mistakenly. So whenever the body started attacking our own tissues, the immune system attacking our own tissues, this condition is called autoimmunity. So in this lecture, I will discuss about introduction to autoimmunity, conditions in which autoimmune disorders will occur and classification of autoimmune disorders and I will discuss about pathogenesis of autoimmune disorders. So first let us see the definition of autoimmune, autoimmunity. Okay. So the brief definition is, it is a condition, it is a condition in which the body, the body's immune system, the body's immune system attacks own cells and tissues resulting in diseased, diseased state resulting in abnormal conditions resulting in abnormal conditions is called as autoimmunity autoimmunity okay so it is a condition in which the body's immune system attacks our own cells and tissues resulting in abnormal conditions or we can also say it is the ability of the immune system fails in recognizing self-antigens and that also induces autoimmunity. When the immune system unable to recognize our own antigens as self-antigens, then it will think, okay, this is a foreign antigen and it will start killing our own cells. So we can also say it is a condition, it is a condition in which the body's immune system, the body's immune system fails in recognizing, recognizing self antigens and attacking, con considering and attacking, considering as foreign. So, immune system will consider our own cells as a foreign substances and it will start killing our own self antigens. So, this is a brief definition of autoimmunity. So, let us see conditions in which autoimmune disorders occurs. Okay. So, second one is conditions in which autoimmune occurs. So, second one is conditions in which autoimmunity develops auto immunity develops okay so the first condition is hidden antigens exposure to exposure to hidden antigens so what is hidden antigen students exposure to hidden antigens means see there are certain cells and organs within our body that never exposed to the immune system by the way when i'm saying exposure i want to tell one important thing during the development of a baby in the womb, the cells that is encountered by the developing baby will be considered as autoantigens. And this baby's immune system will tolerate these antigens. So the antigens which are exposed to a developing baby will get treated as a self-antigens. They will be treated as a self-antigens and they won't initiate any problems. Okay. And these self antigens is called as immune tolerance. This phenomenon is called immune tolerance. Okay. So I will discuss about immune tolerance in the upcoming time. Meanwhile, see what is exposure of hidden antigens. So exposure of hidden antigens means there are certain cells and tissues in our body. Say for example, testis. So in the testis, what, have, what is testis composed of students? Sperms, right? So testis is always covered in the scrotum and testis, uh, these sperm cells are never in direct contact with the body's immune system. So the body immune system don't know what are these antigens. 
the sperm antigens so these kind of antigens are called as hidden antigens so one of the best example for hidden antigens are sperm uh, retinal eyes uh, the retina in the eyes and we have one more example like uh, thyroglobulin thyroid gland so all these antigens are hidden from our immune system so whenever there is a damage to the scrotum or damage to the testes these forms will be leak into the blood and they will get exposed to the anti immune system and immune system will develop antibody against sperms resulting in infertility condition in males so this kind of antigen exposure can triggers hidden antigens will provoke provoke autoimmunity so for example in case of eyes so uh, in the old age of say for example after 50 years the people will tend to develop cataracts within the eye so whenever they have a cataract they they will undergo a minor surgery where they will remove the cataract so when they remove in this cataract the lens proteins will get uh, exposed to the immune system and that immune system will start treating as a lens as a foreign substance and it will attack our own cells why body attacked like this because immune system never it doesn't know what is this lens immune system don't know what are these sperms because they never encountered directly with immune system so this is the first time immune system saw these antigens and it will think okay these are foreign substances and i want to attack them so in that way hidden antigens can trigger autoimmune responses so that is one condition then second one is oh uh, i'm sorry just wait Hmm. Are ya? This YouTube setup no. Fine, fine. So second one is antigen alteration. Antigen alteration. So what is this al antigen alteration? See, our body has a self antigens, right? And all the body cells has uh, body has cells, and these cells has DNA, and this DNA will code the cell proteins. i hope you already know there are two important immune recognizing system in our body which is called as mhc major histocompatibility complex so mhc are of three classes can anyone say these three classes class 1 class 2 and class 3 class 1 will present in all cells of the body whereas class 2 is present in the antigen presenting cells say for example macrophages b cells and dendritic cells they have class 2 Uh, mhc molecules so usually in class 1 all other normal cells have class 1 right class 1 molecules so due to some genetic mutations what happens is these cell receptors these class 1 receptors will be damaged when there is no class 1 receptors immune system will think okay they don't have class 1 receptors so they are foreign cells and it will start attacking these cells so this is called as alteration to the antigens antigen alteration also provokes the uh, immune system to attack so that is alteration of antigens then the third one is cross reactivity cross reactivity reactivity what is this cross reactivity antigens so uh, let me give you one example so there is a um streptococcus so this is streptococcus bacilli i'm sorry streptococcus bacteria so this streptococcus bacteria has some toxins and some proteins and these proteins of this bacteria are very similar to the proteins that are present inside the heart heart antigens heart antigens and this bacterial antigens looks like same so what happens whenever we have a bacterial infection our body will prepare antibodies against this bacteria and these antibodies will also react with the proteins which are similar to these these antigens so these antibodies will attack the heart cells also because they both have similar antigenic properties that results in autoimmune disorder where they will develop endocarditis our immune system will develop an auto antibodies towards the heart and that leads to a condition called uh, endocarditis which is an autoimmune disorder so these are called these kind of antigens are called as cross reactive antigens okay so then we have one more thing forbidden antigens forbidden 
antigens. So what is this forbidden antigens? See students, when the baby is developing within the womb of a mother, whatever cells baby is producing, those cells will be treated as a self cells. Self uh, cells. And this baby won't develop any uh, antibodies towards its, its own cells. And there is one theory called ICC, immunocompetent cell, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, you know, proposed by Sir Maxwell and Barnett, uh, the one who discovered clonal selection theory. So according to clonal selection theory, what he states is, there are some cells within our body and these cells are responsible for the production of antibodies. So he don't know that they are B cells, but what he said is, they are immunocompetent cells and those cells has the property of developing antibodies to all the available antigens. So these cells can provide antigens to everyone, but during the, the cells which will develop antibodies against all cells will be destroyed. The immune cells which are developing antibodies to kill our own body, those cells will be destroyed by during the fetal development and these destroyed immunocompetent cells are called as forbidden cells so they are completely forbidden they have been eliminated from the body these cells should not exist because if they started activating to our own body they will develop anti anti antibodies and those anti antibodies will kill our so that means our immune system will kill our own cells due to presence of these forbidden cells so that is the forbidden cells will be eliminated from our body but there are some cases where these forbidden cells will get reactivated. They will get reactivated and they will start secreting antibodies towards our own cells and we will develop autoantibody or uh, autoimmune disorder. So this is called as reactivation of forbidden antigens, forbidden immunocompetent cells. Reactivation of forbidden immunocompetent cells will result in autoimmune disorder. Okay. So other than this, we have one more thing, which is defects in the T and B cells. So fifth one is defects in T and B cell activities. Activities. Obviously, you know, we have four types of T cells. What are the four types of T cells? Helper T cells, suppressor T cells, cytotoxic T cells and memory T cells. So what is the role of the suppressor uh, cytotoxic T cells? Cytotoxic T cells will always try to attack either cancer cells or some vigorous actions, right? So cytotoxic T cells are very potent in nature. They will kill every um, foreign substances. But they have a limit. Whenever cytotoxic T cells killing any pathogen, the, the cytotoxic T cell activity will be suppressed by suppressor T cell. Suppressor T cell is also called as regulatory T cell. So whenever there is a problem with the regulatory T cell, if regulatory T cell not suppressing the cytotoxic T cell, cytotoxic T cell will start killing our own body cells and that's result in autoimmune disorders. Okay, so defects in any either T cells or B cells will result in autoimmunity. So these are the five causes of developing autoimmune disorders. What is the first one student? Exposure to the hidden antigens uh, or uh, alterations in the genes of our own antigen cells or cross reactivity or forbidden antigens such as a clonal selection theory, immunocompetent cells, the forbidden cells will get reactivated and they will kill our body cells and the last and final is defects in the T cells or B cells will result in autoimmune disorders. Fine. So let us see. The second one is classification of autoimmune disorders. So these cells started killing our own body and how they are classified, autoimmune disorders classification, okay? So this, oh my goodness, why? Stay properly. Hmm. So types of autoimmune disorders. So next one is classification of autoimmune disorders or types. So these are broadly classified into three types, okay? Hemolytic autoimmune disorders. Hemolytic autoimmune disorders okay then second one is localized localized autoimmune disorders so when i say localized that means organ specific so some uh, some autoimmune disorders will only attack thyroid gland some autoimmune disorders will attack only pancreas 
or some autoimmune disorders will attack only a specific organ. So these kind of uh, autoantibody conditions, autoimmune conditions are called as uh, organ specific. They are localized and organ specific. And uh, uh, other one is hemolytic autoimmune disorders. Hemolytic autoimmune disorders means in these conditions, uh, antibodies will be developed diagnosed to red blood cells. All hemolytic antibody disorders, autoimmune disorders includes destruction of red blood cells, development of antibodies towards the red blood cells. Then, and last and final is non-localized, non-localized autoimmune disorders. That means it is, it can be also said as systemic autoimmune disorders. Systemic means it will spread throughout the body. So, auto, auto, auto immunity will be developed in the, all the organs in our body is called non-organ specific autoimmune disorders or systemic autoimmune disorders. Whereas localized is a particular organ will be targeted to kill. So, localized autoimmune disorders then hemolytic autoimmune disorders. So, examples of hemolytic autoimmune disorder is idiopathic, idiopathic, Thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia. So what is this idiopathic thrombocytopenia? Idiopathic means we don't know the cause. Due to some unknown cause, the platelets start destroyed by the antibodies. So platelets will get destroyed. That means thrombocytopenia. Decreased platelet count due to some unknown causes. So that is one thing. And second one is Leukopenia, leukopenia, that means uh, white blood cells will get reduced. So our antibodies will be developed towards the white blood cells and white blood count will be reduced. So that is uh, leukopenia and last and final is autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So in this obviously Antibodies will be developed diagnosed the red blood cells and our we will develop a condition called anemia. So autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So these are the three important uh, conditions in hemolytic autoimmune disorders. Then I'm going to the I'm moving towards localized autoimmune disorders. So when I say localized autoimmune disorders, they will develop uh, autoimmunity towards a specific organ, right? So let us see them. So first one is Graves disease. Graves disease. Can anyone say what is Graves disease? So, this is an autoimmune disorder which is which attacks the uh, adrenal cortex and results in a condition called Gra Graves disease. In this, our anti thyroid stimulating antigen antibodies will be produced by the body. So, thyroid stimulating hormone antigens will be developed in the body. And those uh, antibodies against this antigen will develop and body will uh, lead to a condition called Graves disease. Then we have Hashimoto thyroiditis. Hashimoto thyroiditis. Thyroiditis. So in Hashimoto thyroiditis, antibody antibodies will be developed towards the thyroglobulin. Thyroglobulin. Globulin. Auto, uh, antibodies developed against thyroglobulin, which is a thyroid hormone. Okay. Then third one is pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia. So in pernicious anemia, what happens is antibodies will be developed against gastric intestine, gastric intestinal cells. So why? What is the relation between gastric intestinal cells and pernicious anemia? Our intestine will will secrete one of the important vitamin. Vitamin B12 will be produced by gut bacteria. Whenever there is a problem with this intestinal uh, wall and that results in uh, pernicious anemia. Okay. So, after antibodies develop diagnosis, gastric intestinal cells. Okay. Then we have one more. To be precise, gastric parietal cells. Gastric parietal cells. Cells. Antibodies will be developed against gastric parietal cells and that results in pernicious anemia. Okay, then we have Addison's disease. Addison's disease. So, in Addison's disease, what happens is antibodies will be developed against adrenal cortex. Adrenal cortex. 
so all the adrenal cortex will be attacked by the body's immune auto antibodies and that results in a condition called addison's disease and last and final is chronic active hepatitis chronic active hepatitis obviously it is a autoimmune disorder which will attack the liver okay so these are the five localized autoimmune disorders graves disease hashimoto thyroiditis pernicious anemia addison's disease and chronic active hepatitis are the examples for localized autoimmune disorders so next let us move to the non localized autoimmune disorders third one non localized autoimmune disorders so in non localized autoimmune disorders immune system will start attacking all the body parts in our body so this is a systemic problem systemic autoimmune disorder so let us see some examples for non localized autoimmune disorders one is systemic lupus erythematosus very famous so what kind of antibodies will be developed in sle can anyone say students systemic lupus erythematosus can anyone say what kind of antibodies will be developed agonist anti nuclear antibodies anti nuclear antibodies will be developed resulting in um uh, anti antibodies that are destroying the nucleus of the cells resulting in a form formation of one particular cell what is that cell name tart cell and the phenomenon by which the lab test by which we will detect this tart cells is called as le cell test lupus erythematosus test and the phenomenon is called as systemic lupus erythematosus so that is one example then the second one is good pastor syndrome good pastor syndrome so what is this good pastor syndrome name is good but the syndrome is very bad okay so what happens here is antibodies will be developed against the basement membrane basement membrane antibodies will develop against basement membrane and this basement what is basement membrane the lung alveoli or kidney cells all these cells will be stitched to a basement membrane this basement membrane will act as a base for the adhesion of these cells so whenever there is a problem with the basement membrane these cells will be collapsed and there will be a problem to lungs or kidneys or other organs resulting in uh, damage to that particular organs so that is called as good pastor syndrome okay so other than this we have one more thing which is uh, these are enough students so totally we have three types of autoimmune disorders hemolytic autoimmune disorders localized autoimmune disorders and non localized autoimmune disorders okay so coming to the pathogenesis of autoimmune disorder how these autoimmune disorders occur so this pathogenesis is very straight forward pathogenesis you need to know this system mhc 1 mhc 2 or uh, forgot about mhc3 mhc3 is involved in complement system regulation complement system regulation i hope you know what is complement system how it is regulated so i need not to go further for complement system so whenever there is a problem with uh, uh, this uh, uh, major histo compatibility uh, genes that results in condition uh, some pathogenic conditions they will trigger hyperactivation they will they will trigger hyper sensitivities sensitivities reactions that means allergic reactions if you see allergic reactions we have type 2 type 1 type 2 type 3 type 2 and type 3 let me discuss about type 2 and type 3 the famous mnemonic is acid 1 2 3 4 so uh, antibody mediated cell mediated hypersensitivity reaction immune complex mediated hypersensitivity reaction and delayed hypersensitivity reaction if i'm discussing about c it is cytotoxic hypersensitivity reaction cytotoxic hypersensitivity reaction is mediated by type 2 whereas type 3 is uh, immune complex mediated hypersensitivity immune complex mediated both these condition can lead to autoimmune disorders okay so let me give you one best example for autoimmune disorders type 2 diabetes in in mellitus so in type 2 i'm sorry type 1 diabetes mellitus in type 1 diabetes what happens is immune system will start the killing our own pancreatic cells the langerhans cells of pancreas 
दे विल गेट डेस्ट्रॉयड बाय इम्यून सिस्टम रिजल्ट्स इन टाइप 1 डायबिटीज मेलिटस सो टाइप 1 डायबिटीज मेलिटस इज एन ऑटोइम्यून डिसऑर्डर व्हिच इज ऑकर्ड ड्यू टू सम जेनेटिक वेरिएशंस इन द पैंक्रियाटिक सेल्स पर्टिकुलरली लैंगरहेंस सेल्स ओके सो दिस इज द ब्रीफ ओवरव्यू अबाउट ऑटोइम्यून डिसऑर्डर्स इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट यू कैन आस्क मी इन द व्हाट्सएप आफ्टर दिस लेक्चर ओके हैव अ गुड डे स्टूडेंट्स सी यू